What's up? Oh, of course I still love you, babe. Nothing could ever replace you. Okay, good night, babe. cell is accurate. Look at this first layer. Babe, babe, it's not, it's not what it looks like. I swear, I swear. So anyway, now that she's gone, All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little skit. My wife and I had a lot of fun filming it. But the question remains, should you jump your Mark III? I'm Jacob with Butter Pockets, and today we're gonna find out. I've seen some contention on Reddit and other places online that the Mark IV was shipped with missing features, it rattles, it was rushed due to Bamboo Lab. Is it even better than the Mark III? Well, I have a Mark III and an X1, so I wanna see how it compares to those printers and give you guys my honest feedback. I paid for all of these with my own money, so of course, all of my opinions are my own. Let's start off with some of the new features in the Mark IV. I got an assembled printer because that's all they're shipping right now. So I can't come in on the build process, but it has a fancy new touchscreen that you cannot touch yet, but it's got an LED. It's got load cell auto bed leveling. It's got built-in Wi-Fi, which we will talk about later. It's got the all new neck extruder, which has quick swap nozzles. Very cool. It's got these new bed nuts. They're different than the Mark III and it's even got beefier smooth rods. There's more new stuff in this printer, but those are the main ones that I wanted to cover. I do wanna go over the Wi-Fi first. Note that I did have to update the firmware on the printer that came with it in order to get any of this to work. This is one of the features I was most excited about because on my Mark III, I have a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint, so I'm used to running Wi-Fi. I didn't wanna downgrade, quote unquote, to using an SD card or a USB drive anymore. I was kind of expecting that you'd be able to just go through the menu and set this up using an on-screen keyboard or something like that. But no, you actually have to do it all on your computer. So I'm gonna show you how to set that up so you can start using it too. So you're gonna go into the settings, you're gonna to go to network settings, and you're gonna set the default to Wi-Fi. Then go into the Wi-Fi settings and set up the Wi-Fi module. It's gonna ask you to update it. Go ahead and do that. Then once that's done, you're going to enable the Wi-Fi module and it's going to walk you through the steps and it's going to tell you that it's going to put a document on the USB drive. So you're going to take the USB drive out and take it to your computer and edit that document. You add your network name and it's got to be a 2.4 gigahertz network. It doesn't work with 5 gigahertz. And you put the password in. Plug it back in, select to load the INI file. You wait a minute or two. I actually find that if you just reset the printer and let it reboot, it'll come right up. So you do that and then you've got your Wi-Fi symbol and it's ready to rock. Once you're done there, setting up Prusa Link is actually pretty simple. Pull up Prusa Slicer and add a physical printer with this button. Get the details on the Mark IV from under Network Prusa Link. Add all those details in, test the connection, and if you entered it in, you're good. You can also use a web page and go to the IP address and log in with the same credentials and you get kind of a bare bones version of Octoprint. And so this is what Octoprint looks like and it basically allows you to control the whole printer. But uh, Prusa Link allows you to access the files on the printer and do a couple basic things and monitor it, but you can't really have full control over the printer like you could in Octoprint. Unfortunately, a lot of this process on my computer using Prusa Link was kind of wonky. When you are in Prusa Slicer here and you click to upload it to the printer, you actually get an error that it failed, but it still seems to upload to the printer and it still seems to print, so that's nice. Yet another point of contention is that the upload speeds are 
slow. Here's a clip of uploading just a Benchy, and you can see it takes a significant amount of time. Whereas if I upload to Octoprint on my Mark III, it uploads nearly instantly. And one last thing to note is that the printer actually has to be on the main screen for any of this to work. If it's on any other screen, it'll just fail in the slicer and it won't upload and it won't print. I guess using a USB drive or an SD card would be faster, but the time taking it back and forth from your computer to your printer, eh, it's kind of the same. And honestly, with the way printers are nowadays, it's kind of a standard feature to have cloud printing. With Wi-Fi out of the way, I'm sure what you guys are really here for is how this thing prints. I saw some really good recommendations on Reddit for what people want to see out of this thing compared to the Mark III, so I threw that into my testing. I didn't do anything nearly as complicated as Stefan would do, but I ran some stuff that's kind of test prints, and I ran some stuff that are normal prints for me that I would normally print, just so I have a baseline of something that I'm used to what it should look like. I do want to mention before we get into this that my Mark III has a Revo hot end rather than the stock V6. Just know that it isn't bone stock Mark III. I also changed the startup G code of my Mark III so that it gets to 150C, then auto bed levels, and then heats all the way up. So the timing is gonna be a little bit different than a completely stock Mark III. And speaking of auto bed leveling, that's the first thing I wanna talk about. Time from when you hit go to when it first starts printing. The Mark III took about four minutes from hitting print to the first print move. The Mark IV took about two minutes and 45 seconds till the first print move on a relatively small print, a Benchy, and three minutes and 13 seconds for an entire bed print. This is a super nice feature of the auto bed leveling on the Mark IV because it doesn't have to scan the entire bed if you're doing a print that's relatively small. It'll only scan the part of the bed that you're actually gonna use, which is really cool. The X1 doesn't even do that. So the first thing I actually printed on this printer was, of course, a Benchy. And I actually did two on the Mark III and one on the Mark IV. And the differences here, and this is what I saw on Reddit, was someone made the suggestion, if the Mark IV prints faster, what happens if you just take that entire print profile, put it on a Mark III, and just run it? Will it print at the same speed? I did these in the Prusament hex gray, because hexagons. I did them at the 0.2 millimeter speed profile with 15% infill. The Mark III regular Benchy took an hour and 19 minutes, and the Mark IV took an hour and three minutes. So a nice 16 minute time save. I would say they came out with nearly the same quality, and I can't really see any obvious differences between the two. Here are all the differences between the profiles on the Mark III and the Mark IV, and pause so you can read all of these. And here's that Benchy that was printed on the Mark III with the Mark IV settings. It printed in a minute and eight seconds, so a savings of 11 minutes, but still about five minutes slower than the Mark IV. And it looks relatively the same. I really can't notice any appreciable difference. So the Mark III can totally handle the stock speeds of the Mark IV. But remember the Mark IV doesn't have input shaping yet, so it's not moving as fast as it's going to. I find it interesting that even when copying those settings over to the Mark III, there's still about five minutes of a difference between the Mark III and the Mark IV. I think part of it is that Prusa Slicer actually takes into account auto bed leveling. And because the Mark IV only had to do part of the bed, it only took two minutes or whatever I said. And the Mark III had to level the whole bed, which takes extra time. So the next thing I printed was these two boxes. This one was actually printed on my X1. These are things that I designed, so I'm very familiar with how they turn out. And I'm gonna be honest, on the Mark III and the Mark IV, they turned out great. Um, there is some differences here with these between the two printers. I'll go over that in a second when we do some close-ups. And I'll put the link for them down in the description for the link to printables. But overall, I would say that uh, each printer handled these beautifully. They just take forever on the Mark III and the Mark IV. I think there's a difference of about an hour. I'll put up the times down below so that way you can see them. But either way, they take about 18 hours on the Prusas and they take six on the X1. So a third of the time. So I really don't ever print these on my Prusa machine. Um, I almost always print these on my X1. They don't require any supports, but there is quite a bit of overhang here. It's 45 degrees, so the printer should handle them, and they do. And another thing that I try to pay attention to is the accuracy of these holes, because they should come out how I design them, and they do. One thing that all three of these printers did is the transition between the base of this thing, where it does sparse infill, to where it transitions to 
the inside wall where this starts off of the base, there's always one layer line that is thicker than the rest. And you can actually see it on the top and the bottom. All three of these printers do that. And I don't 100% know the fix. I know that maybe playing around with layer times can fix that, but that's just a common issue I have with all of my printers. Oh, and the reason these are different colors is because I actually ran out of this filament on my Mark IV. Coming into these close-ups, it's a pretty subtle difference, but on the one printed on the Mark III, you can see a bit more variance in the extrusion on the outer perimeter of the print. And it's really hard to notice, and it might not even come through in these clips. Under the right lighting, you totally can see a difference in the extrusion on the one on the Mark III versus the one on the Mark IV. And this isn't really present at all in the one that's printed on the X1. You'll see what I mean more when I go to the cylindrical prints that I talk about in a minute. But there definitely is a difference between the extrusion of the Mark III and the Mark IV. Mirage C actually just put up a video about how the next extruder should produce much more consistent extrusion, especially compared to the dual drive gear that's in the Mark III. So that might have something to do with it. The last thing I did was some vase mode printing. Um, I printed this slightly more complicated model, as well as uh, the cylinder that I always see uh, the YouTube channel Mirage C print. With these complicated ones, it's very interesting, at the same exact spot, they both had the same mistake where there's a little bit of gapping in the layer lines. And I don't know if that's a model difference, a cooling difference or something, if this is like a particularly weird facet on the model, but I don't think it is. And it's very interesting to, to me that they both did it at the same layer height. These cylinders tell an interesting story in that you actually can see a little bit of a difference between the Mark III and the Mark IV. And if you get these under just the right lighting, you can really see how the Mark III and the Mark IV, there is just a little bit of more inconsistent extrusion on the Mark III. And even when you feel it in your hand, the one from the Mark IV is noticeably smoother. I think that goes to show that the next extruder is capable of very consistent extrusion. Overall, the Mark IV prints exactly like I would expect, like a Mark III, which isn't a bad thing at all. I expect super consistent prints out of a Prusa machine, and that's exactly what I'm getting out of a Mark IV. I'm really interested to see what input shaping can do for this thing, because right now, it does print faster than the Mark III, but not by a lot. And the next extruder produces a little bit more consistent extrusion than the Mark III, but not by a lot. So I'm really interested to see if this thing can print a little faster without sacrificing any of that really consistent Prusa quality. I'm also really spoiled by my Bamboo Lab X1, and I would really love to see this thing catch up. One thing I've seen all over the internet is that I guess the Mark IV is having some rattling problems. Um, it's my understanding that Prusa has slowed down shipping or stopped shipping some units because of this problem with rattling. I don't think mine's developed that problem yet. I only have about 50 hours of printing on it. But as far as I can tell, it's not really doing it yet. Well, after all that, is a Mark IV worth it? Should you pick one up? In my opinion, if you already have a Mark III, I don't know if it's worth upgrading to a Mark IV. Yeah, unless you really want the auto bed leveling, which I have to admit is very nice and I'm spoiled about that from my X1. It's kind of a lot of the same, like I said, which isn't a bad thing. It's a Prusa, of course it's gonna be great. But if you already have a Mark III, I don't know that I'd recommend upgrading to a Mark IV. But if you don't have a Mark III and you're looking for a printer that's around this price point, what's to stop you from buying an X1? An assembled Mark IV and an X1 are like the exact same price. So why would you get a Prusa over an X1 that, like I said, prints three times as fast over an 18 hour print. I think that's just something you have to answer for yourself and what you're looking for in your printer. Do you need to print multiple filaments in one print and use an AMS? And do you need a printer that's already enclosed? Are you doing this as more of a hobby, something fun? Do you want a printer that you can tweak and do some upgrades to, which you can do upgrades to both of them, I think it's a little bit easier to do it on a Prusa machine, but Prusa has a proven track record that's lasted many years in showing that they build really good printers and they'll take care of you if you have a problem. I know that recently on Reddit, there's been a lot of posts of, hey, customer service ghosted me, or hey, my, my bed's not flat anymore and they won't send me a new one. But I usually see updates where they say, oh, actually Bamboo Labs customer service took care of me. So I think Bamboo Labs is trying to build that reputation for themselves, but they're still a relatively new company. And they're definitely gonna come out with more printers in the future. 
So if you don't wanna go into a company that's relatively new and you wanna stick with one that's been around for a long time, Prusa is definitely a very good bet. So when it comes to these two printers that are relatively the same price, it really just depends on what ecosystem you wanna go into, how you're gonna use the printer, and I think it's something that you just have to weigh the pros and cons of each of these printers and decide it for yourself. That's all I've got for you guys today. That was a quick look at how the Mark IV is compared to the Mark III. Let me know in the comments if there was something I missed or there's any other kind of comparisons that you guys wanna see with this printer. There's gonna be a link to a bunch of the models I used in the description, so definitely check them out. Remember that subscribing keeps your prints buttery smooth, and I'll see you guys in the next one.